studio by our international affairs commentator, Douglas Herbert. Good morning, Doug. Good morning, Doug, this announcement may feel like a surprise to some of us, but for many Iranians, this has actually been a very long time coming. And for those who are old enough to remember, decades and decades. I mean, look, formally, uh, the idea of a morality p police and this 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 uh, compulsion to have to wear a veil for women uh, has been around since the Islamic Revolution, right, in Iran uh, in 1979. It really was formally established as such, what we call it today, the morality police with that name uh, in the early 1990s. And over the years, depending on, uh, you know, the administration in Iran, it has either been more strictly enforced or less strictly enforced. It was under really uh, Ahmadinejad, uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, that you really saw uh, uh, in the mid-2000s a real enforcement and an establishment of the morality p police is really the last and final arbiter and the, the lead, playing the, taking the lead role in enforcing uh, these Islamic strictures uh, with regard regard to dress and other manners of behavior. And now, you know, with the latest hardliner, the President Raisi in, uh, it's, we've had a further beefing up, at least until recently, at least until, as you, as you said, uh, the protests were triggered by an action of the morality police that led to the tragic death of a young Iranian Kurdish woman uh, back in mid-September while she was in police custody. So the, the, the police have been around there a while, but people have been protesting for many, many years. There have been protests. Women were wearing white for many, many years as a form of protest against this uh, this stricture, having to, uh, you know, wear the hijab, not exposing any hair, not exposing any skin, wearing loose-fitting clothes so as, so as not to show your body shape or anything like that. Uh, and you've also had applications on mobile phones even before these protests warning Iranian women where are their checkpoints where they might encounter on the public streets these morality police. So it's been around a while, but obviously it's it's gone to a boil uh, with these protests since mid-September. And we hear about, when we hear about the morality police, we think, of course, first and foremost, of the female dress code being yeah. enforced. But as you were saying, they actually do much more than that. Much more than that. I mean, you're absolutely right. The focus has been on, and in Iran, it's been exclusively on uh, how it applies to women and the restrictions on women's ability to determine their own behavior, their own dress. Uh, but it also has to do with anything that really is Islamic sort of slash Sharia interpretation, which is, and law, which is uh, alcohol drinking, but also going right down to, until recently, uh, the mingling, men and women mingling uh, in certain social events, uh, publicly, in society. That was also something that was under the purview, if you will, of the morality police. Uh, basically, as, as some people would, would, would put it, is the morality police, as the name would suggest, were the arbiters of what's right and what's wrong across all of society. They were on the front line of enforcing that theocratic, hardline vision of Islamic law that has been in place since the Islamic Re Revolution. And Iran's morality police have really been in the spotlight, especially with these protests, but there are actually other countries around the world that have a very similar police force. Yeah, any country where uh, you have a s strict codes of behavior enforced. Uh, and you can name several, uh, you know, instances. Saudi Arabia, which, yes, in recent years has eased restrictions on women as part of its, what it, what it likes to see as it's sort of opening up its modernization 2030 vision, has eased those restrictions. We've seen women being able to do more things, but they had their Mutawa police, which were the Saudi version of the Iranian morality police. In Sudan, um, we've all, which right now is a hardline uh, regime, if ever there was one. Uh, you've also had a version of the uh, public order police, if you will, enforcing these types of strictures with obviously variations from one country to the next. And in Malaysia as well, uh, we've had a version of the morality police. But the attention has rightfully, I think, been focused on Iran because the police there have really singled out women in public life, women, the restrictions on what women can say and do and wear in public life. And it has broadened out the protests, obviously, against restrictions on their political and economic liberties and their, their, their basically their ability to express themselves. That's what the morality police, it was the most virulent, industrial strength version of morality police perhaps in the world.